I was just looking at the uh, that picture, uh, <clears throat> and it's so moving what you both just shared about Libby sharing about the the meal catered and sponsored by the Sikhs and um, the story of the Israeli and Palestinian women embracing and, and returning to each other time and time again to facilitate this healing. And that's, I, I, that's what it's all about, is about healing those, those wounds that are so deep within all of us. Um, and what Wendy touched upon and, and Andrew and myself of music, I mean, to me, in, in every single faith tradition, or at least in some, some faith traditions that I've, uh, there's a saying that, uh, that, that music is uh, the highest form of prayer. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, or when you, you sing your praises, um, or, or the, the Indian you know, uh, Tagore said, uh, God loves me when I work. God respects me when I work, but loves me when I sing. So um, that's so. I'm excited working with with all of you. Of of, and we're we're in the Bay Area, so there's a lot of this type of thing. Um, but to promote some kind of interfaith concert that we could all work on um, to bring interspiritual concert to um, would be a great uh, vehicle to to promote what we're all talking about today, so. Yeah, it's the, uh, the big ending ceremony at the tabernacle was with all the children, as was described by Andrew, was unbelievable. Just to think of all those kids growing up in this atmosphere together, which is so needed right now to have young people have a positive experience about life and relationships as opposed to being told by their parents that their neighbors are their enemies. And these kids are all experiencing something really beautiful, singing together and seeing each other. And they were so cute and funny and, you know, kind of shoving. And there were so many of them that could hardly fit on the stage. And a couple of the little boys were sort of hidden behind a big podium. And then they'd squeeze their way in. And it was, it was really cute, really sweet. And then the song was just rousing and people loved it but i would also say one negative thing for me was as beautiful as the mormon tabernacle choir is there wasn't a dark face in the huge choir so there's work to do you know maybe that's just the way it is but somehow in a choir like that you know that there are some other darker colored skins that have beautiful voices that could be in that choir with them that was an observation I made. Hmm. Anybody else have any uh, lingering personal insights for our own lives from today? Um, I have our, one. Oh, go, go, ahead, go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead. You, you uh, first, yeah. I, I was, I was just thinking uh, the the one um, thought that I took out of the conference was to, and this was actually a major theme of the of the conference itself, which is emerging leaders, the youth, um, is to educate, to take the time to educate the young, uh, our blossoming young leaders. Um, the millennial and next generations into a new understanding um, about where the planet has to go and their role in stepping up to the plate. Yeah. Um, we had an opportunity to bring out two of our young, uh, really dynamic um, young leaders, both in their 20s. Um, one was African-American, the other Hispanic, both from the L.A. area, and they walked away uh, saying this was the most important life-changing event they'd had. Mm. Wow! And uh, that was a uh, that was our intention, and I think um, we need to multiply that um, that effect by giving young people an opportunity to experience these things 
and getting the word out uh, to larger and larger. They are the future, and they have to they have to have the same vision, and and they're ready for it. They're ready to embrace it. I think the key is experience. That if we can make education experiential, labs, mm -hmm. shops, and authentic experiences rather than just live in the intellect. It'll be so important what you said. Mm -hmm. And REA, a lot of people go there all on their own, you know, as individuals. So neat. And they all meet each other and you just go from booth to booth and talk to talk and dance to dance. And you just, they're all kindred spirits. Uh, we were with, we were at a reunion last night of Camp Tawanga, the Jewish camp where we had our peacemakers camp. Last night we were at their 90th birthday celebration and there was a young woman there that we hadn't, she had been at the parliament, we hadn't seen her. And I said, who did you go with? And she said, oh, I went by myself. She said, these are my peeps. She said, I'm just, you know, whenever I'm in a place where there's peace workers and, and interfaith and interspiritual, she said, I'm there. And uh, so they're your peeps, so you can go. Thank you, Libby. Um, you know, I think that's a personal takeaway from me is um, next time I'll go. <laughs> but it's every uh, five years, so there'll yep. be hundreds of opportunities between now and then right where we live, probably. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about this whole, for me, I don't know if you would identify this as personal, Len, but for me it's personal. I'm thinking about this whole theme that's coming through uh, what, what we're all saying of, we're talking about not only people of different religions um, meeting each other and evolving and opening uh, our hearts and understanding, but the whole, the whole construct of religion itself uh, that there is an evolution of 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 opening of of um, how people of faith, how groups of people of faith hold themselves and and hold each other. I'm relating that to a book that Wendy and I have been very taken with lately. It's called "Not in God's Name," mm. And not in, and, and it's it's um, um, moving beyond religious violence. It's written by Jonathan Sachs, who was the chief rabbi of the UK, and is now an academic uh, in New York. And he looks at this in some really really radical ways that religion evolved, among other things as a social structure, as a way for people to increase a circle of trust. You know, how do I know if, if I'm living 3,000 years ago, if that human approaching me uh, on the path or through the desert is out to kill me or out to steal my food or out to rape my wife or my daughter or whatever, you know? And nothing's and, changed in 3,000 years. But but that what religion, the way he holds it, you know, it's very well documented, was about was about a way of increasing the circle of trust. That if people if I could identify someone as from my religion and my background, even though I don't personally know them, I can assume that I can trust them and invite them into my house and share my food with them and so on. But the basic, basic contradiction in all that is that there's us and them. Mm -hmm. I see somebody who's not obviously of my religion, and I can't trust them. And I have to be prepared to defend my peeps by being prepared to do whatever it takes to keep that other away. And that is the, it's built into human DNA, it's built into our psychology, and it's built into our sociology. That that's, that's his thesis. And that in order to move to a world of peace, we need to sort of re reweave our whole understanding of, of religion and community and, and who we trust. 
and to learn to be open to the stranger, whoever that stranger might be. So I'm hearing in this conversation, you know, a lot of resonance to what Wendy and I have been very engaged in mm -hmm. thinking and talking about over the past few weeks. I'd like to make a comment. Um, you know, it feels like, maybe it feels like this is very hard, we're alone, we have to start from scratch. I know there's models that are in place, the, the, the conferences that you've um, attended, but religion, I think, isn't necessarily a, a bad word. Organized religion is, <laughs> so much has been done in God's name. Uh, there's been, been terrible travesties, terrible injury. But um, I'm thinking of a model that is re religious-based, that is absolutely on the fringe as far as social justice and making change in our culture, and that's Glide Church of San Francisco. It's world famous, yeah. and I've attended that, maybe several of us have once or twice. <clears throat> Talk about cultural and racial and uh, diversity. Every single people uh, is represented. Of course, the Bay Area is especially diverse in that as far as demographics. But um, I'm speaking of music, a music program that just lifts you right through the roof. And their social justice work, they have clinics for, um, for women and for AIDS and for, um, I mean, it's just, it's so much on the, on the forefront of, of, of what we're talking about. So it's a living example. It's, yes, it's in, it's enclosed in a way with, within the Methodist religion, but look at the work that they're doing. So I'm just thinking there are models there um, that, that we, you know, so we don't, you know, we don't have to reinvent, reinvent everything. We can just piggyback on, on what is very, very successful in, in what they're doing. Oh, man. I don't think it's the religions that are bad. I think they have, they all have their principles and their values about love and the highest. It's what we've done with them as human beings and how we've reinterpreted them to get what we want and to win at all costs. So one of the things that I think came out of our um, parliament was that most, I would say the majority of the people there really are on the path of understanding that we're seeking the highest parts of all the different faiths that were represented there and all the spirituality because we're reaching that impasse or that time in history where we almost have to do it or we're not going to make it. We have to learn how to really cooperate not only for each other but for all the species. Right, Wendy? I see the cats going back and forth. And we're really looking, at, we're really thinking about the whole living system. And I think that was represented at the parliament. Um, so it, it's inspiring work if we can all do it together. And, and yeah, it's a, we're, I think we're at a, a real important crossroads in figuring out if we're going to do it or not. And if we're going to cut back and, our use of violence to resolve global problems. We see that there's another potential.